Yo, I just finished doing a master class on clarity, the necessity of clarity. It was phenomenal. But that's not what I want to talk to you about, at least not that type of detail. What I want to talk about is why it's so essential that you show up in your life. <sighs> Listen, when you show up in your life, there are so many benefits. When I tell you that only 10% to 15% of people know their personal brand and only 5% actually live it, that should scare you because you're probably in the 95 percentile. Like it's common, it's easy. It doesn't mean anything's wrong with you. It means that you've been duped and the majority of us have been duped. There's a couple things that you can check to see if you've been duped. Do you buy stuff that you don't need to make you feel better? Do you own things and you think that because you own them, you have status? Do you often let go of stuff, yes or no? If the answer is no, you tend to hold on to stuff, then you're still probably part of the 95%. And that's not a slam. Again, I'm not dogging anybody. I mean, the system is set up for us to fail. That doesn't mean we're going to fail, but it's set up for us to fail. Other questions 95 percenters might ask them, do you go to a job that you hate? Are you married to someone that you no longer love? Now, that's not suggesting you get a divorce, but there's another side to it that could transform that completely. Because it's just saying you're committed because of it's the right thing to do. Oh, that's another good one. Do you still live your life doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do? Out of obligation? Out of fear? Concern for the afterlife? Then you are probably disconnected from yourself. And again, 95% of us are. I am not demonizing the 95%. I'm saying that when we live in that world, then we don't have access to all the beauty, all the love, all the passion, all the fulfillment, all the joy, all the wonder that you are, that I am, that you are, that you were born to be. Oh God, it lights up my soul. I could get excited, like I am excited, but like really excited because do you know that you are unique? I don't mean better than somebody else. That's that's a that whole worthiness conversation drives me nuts. But you're unique. And so is the person next to you. And if you don't tap into your uniqueness, then you're just mimicking and attempting to become bits and pieces of others and living life looking for outward external things to validate who you are. And you're going to continue to do that because that's the mode of which you live your life. The only problem is, it sucks. <sighs> I've heard people say in time, it's hard to be myself. On the contrary, my friends, let me tell you, it is far, far more difficult to play the role of somebody else. To try to put bits and pieces together of other folk than it is to learn to get quiet, find out who you are, and relax into it. Two things that showed up that I like to talk about and I talked about today in the mastermind as well, it's the difference between self-esteem and self-awareness. In the world of self-esteem, all right, it's who you are, what you do, your contribution, etc., and all those wonderful things that you should be proud of. However, they are also tending to base themselves on the external approval of others, which isn't bad because we are interdependent. We need to do that. If you are a social media communicator at work, wait, hey, listen, we need to do that. No one wants to show up bad in society. But self-esteem is often impacted by the external factors that can rock you. On the other hand, self-awareness, 
self-awareness goes back to your awareness of your pure intrinsic human value who you are what you bring how you show up not related to anything outside of you not related to achievements nor accomplishments but you yeah you your pure self your natural state now I know we live in a day and time where people say, well, if I'm pissed off, then that means you're giving me permission to just go off. No, that, that's not your natural state. That's an altered state. And going off is not the truth. Going off would be a reflection of not being connected to what's really happening, which could be you're hurt. You're disappointed. And then you communicate from that vulnerable space. This is all good stuff. Oh, my God. So we were talking in this master class about discovering and finding your way to yourself. And one guy said, well, what's some of the things that you can do that can help open this up and practice it on a daily basis? I'll give you those three things real quick. Number one, every morning you wake up, just be still. Just be still for a moment and meditate a minute. To, I even heard that there's a, U, a Spotify station called The One Minute, One Minute for You or something. Forgive me for jacking it up. But take a minute to five to just be still, maybe with some meditation music, maybe in silence, and just listen. Not for words per se, but just get present. The second thing you can do, or layer onto that, is you can turn, uh, you can move into breathing exercises there's so many out there i don't claim to be a breath expert at all but one that was taught to me was to inhale deeply for four count hold it for five exhale seven and repeat that round Three times, I'm already feeling the calmness. It connects you with your spirit and your mind. And then the third thing you can do is get off your arse and start moving your butt. I've been guilty. I've been chilling, been walking through a transition, and that's the thing I've got to return to. Move your body. When you move your body, you enhance your mind-body connection, and that brings the wholeness of who you are. So you're tapping into spirit with breath and silence or meditation. And then you bring it in body and then you're also breathing. So now you got your mind, body, spirit happening, which keeps you centered. Now that's a great start, right? But if you don't start there, you're just out doing things. When you start there with your mind, your breath, your body, your spirit connected, then you begin to live from that space. And it's the living from that space when life gets to get so juicy and so good. Because you're no longer striving, trying to become someone else. Instead, you're being from who you are. Your natural gifts, your natural skills, your natural talents, and those that you've developed and sharpened. You're contributing wholeheartedly. And I promise you there's nothing like it. I know you might be thinking, well, how does that pay bills, Marquise? Well, it does. Because as you develop and cultivate those things, you can find work that aligns with who you are. But if you don't know who you are, you just do work. And that's why we have struggles with work, life, and balance. Because people are not happy at work. Hmm. Good stuff. So you got that. Then you have this other thing. Once you're filled and you're full on the inside, which is amazing and where you need to be, you don't stop there. You see, that feeling is something you should have. It's your God-given right. It's your creator's right. But we're just detached from ourselves, so most of us don't experience. So that can feel amazing, and it should when you return to that. But here's the thing. Once you've returned to that, you're in all your abundance and your being. You are then prepared to glean, to be gleaned from, to provide shade for others, to provide insight for others, 
Because when you're full, you're not stealing from anybody else. You're not taking from anybody else. You're not looking for wrong in anybody else because you're actually happy. But then it shifts to you being a resource for others. Time, money, energy, wisdom, whatever that is. By just being you. Not by going out of your way to become something more. But just by being you. And having the awareness that your abundance isn't just for you. Your peace isn't just for you. Your happiness isn't just for you. It's also your contribution to the planet. And when you start contributing to the planet like that. Oh Pure fulfillment, literally pure fulfillment. You are fulfilled in the depths of your bowels. That's a whole religious term. You're fulfilled in your heart, mind, body, and spirit, in your soul. And you wake up every day ready to go. Just loving on people, giving to people. And that's a beautiful feeling. It's available for you. You've just got to be willing to discover you. The phrase is be, do, have. Be who you want to be. Do what that looks like. And then you have as a result. Most of us spend our time doing. We don't even have a conversation around being. We do have or do and don't have and are frustrated thinking, why don't we have? It's because we left off the being who we are. I just want to invite you, want to invite you to Start taking a deeper dive into who you are. You're freaking amazing. I know you probably haven't heard it in a long time. Oh, and who you are is enough. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. Who you are fully, who you really are, is enough. This is Marquisha Coach. Remember, i like for you to like, subscribe, share. If this helped you, send it to somebody. Save it. And be sure to sign up for my free VIP group.